Crew Station A signal cabin was opened in February 1907 as part of the London and North Western Railway's rebuilding of the station following the contraction of the goods and voiding lines to Bassford Hall sidings A and B. A and B cabins, each of the 26 levers, were the smallest of nine electrical boxes to control the whole of the station and siding area. In addition to one small mechanical box, scissors crossing, dated from the 1860s, 1870s rebuilding, the first of these electrical boxes was rusty laid in January 1899, and the last to be opened was Clue South Junction in June 1907. So as we've covered Crew Station A before, we're just going to have a, have a deeper look at some of the things we never managed to see last time we were here. Uh, last time we were here we were playing with the frame and we managed to set some roots up, but obviously the box isn't uh, live to a demonstrator at the moment. Maybe in the future that, that could be done. <laughs> so in the last video we set a few roots and had a look through. So for instance, uh, signal eight there or signal one through signal 16 through points so we've already set that route up so again slightly bigger levers down in the north box much older frame but same operation normal and reverse and some checks in the middle around the back of the frame it's very vertical more a lot higher than north box isn't it yeah, yeah. Uh, the racking for the contact is on the rear on this Cabin, as you can see here, so we have our contacts. Are there any of them actually made with the blocks? They're not, are they? Ah, oh, there they are. So, if you take an example of this lever here, I can find my hand, we can see that the there's a pair of carbon contacts on the back there that make to the actual rubbing block. So, when we operate that lever, it goes through to that. I actually tell you which one that was. That is. Second one across from there, so that'll be that, that one. That's the one. So I can just find that now and line that up. So I'll just put it back. So you can see how it rubs on the carbon contacts. Fairly big chunky carbon contacts. And they just they just spring held in as well. Um, so you can actually just pull the carbon contact block out. Probably see better on that one. They just they're held in by these springs on the side, so you can just pull them straight directly out. Locking frame, it's the locking frame on it. Again, there's some under the floor as well that we didn't know about. Hang on, Gary. The yeah, engine might be, you might squash my fingers. Put the hand away, we'll try. Okay. <laughs> so, is there two rows here, or is it just a single bottom row? That's it. Would there have been another one on the top? No. No, so just a single row on the bottom. Yeah. So you've got two rows of three, uh, smaller tappets than traditional, about half size tappets, and they're adjustable at this end on the nut that you can take off as well. Then you have the kickers that go downstairs, much like London, most London Northwestern frames, when you, you have two rows of locking due to the weight on the locking, the top row, uh, say, is a lift, the bottom row becomes a push and you have a, a balancing kicker on the beam downstairs to transfer the weight so that both rows are in uh, in unison uh, you've got the kicker here to transfer the, the motion from the lever downstairs to the uh, previous ones do you want to try one of the levers and see if you can see that rocking you can see that one there moving so that's driving the different rows of locking downstairs now as well we take this floorboard up. Come on. So with the floorboard now we can see the other two trays of locking again. Single trays locking, yeah, you can see the single trays now because the, the lids actually bolt down into the tray rather than on the top of the tray. So they actually sit inside. Um, so single tray locking, another single tray locking down there. And is there is that the base or is there even one more below that? No, there's only three Just trays. The base. Three trays locking. So all three trays in unison together, directly in line. Another thing to note on this particular type of frame, you have a tensioning mechanism on the back. 
for the rubbing brushes that have come carbon contacts so this spring and this fair here keeps the push onto the carbon contacts on the blocks in the back and you see them making there look at that one let's do that again you can see the rubbing of the carbon contacts there so each contact would have been in a pair then yeah so there's there's no live feed wires to the back of this there's no wires moving up and down that would eventually go on it they've been on the other side yes yeah. so that means the wire in there right yes so these are your terminals massively fairly a bit bigger than lba oh yeah so would there have been links between here and there don't know because they, they look almost like there was links there or something there to bridge them so if you've got the stud for putting your wire on i wonder if they were i wonder if those because this this is obviously a buzz bar yeah so i wonder if that was buzzed down and you could remove the buzz ah if you're changing the whole stack you'd have to take the whole rack out yeah. so you would want to kill the whole rack in one go uh, so you would right. take probably take the link yeah. out to kill that buzz bar yeah, down probably so actually yeah Fairly chunky spring underneath the levers itself. Let me just see that one there. Why, well, yeah, you can feel the spring on it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> almost got them trampoline springs, almost. Yeah. <laughs> but fairly easy to get at. Goodness. trying to work out what these would have been. They seem to be around, and well, they're around the signals. They're certainly around a lot of points, because not everyone has one. Yeah. Interesting. We were just noticing the covers um, look like, they look like they're bolt, single bolt at the top. There isn't holes for them. They look like they, they attach on here and then drop down to there and come out sufficiently that the signal can't be knocking against them. Yeah. According to the picture there. Uh, 20, 25. 25, 24, yeah. 25. We've got a indicator, we've got a feather. Uh, yeah. Right Would that be outside or would you just have it in the corner of the box? I'm, I was thinking about outside. Outside would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I've I've it, I've it simulating a few things again. We were just discussing there, uh, uh, possibly getting in the future, getting some simulations of working off the, uh, the panel itself, off the frame. And we've got, we've got, um, we've also got like having seventeen and twenty one working. We've got uh, spare rigid uh, um, trays. No. Oh, yeah. the theatre indicator, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to see this this one simulated. Because it's it's got a fair bit of space as well. Yeah, I did put a um, I did get up to uh, one of the track circuit last year. I bought battery several years ago, and then got a first track circuit working about thirty odd years. <laughs> so for those who've not seen before, this is underneath Crew Station A's box, and what not many of us realise is actually three trays of locking. There's a bit of a mezzanine floor here, and the locking trays go up above that. And that's right up to the bottom of the floorboards as well up there. 